All right, question from Sunday morning, November 16th, this past Sunday. It has to do with the nature of the price paid by Christ Jesus. And I'm not, uh, I'm not sure the reference within the sermon was probably the fact that I made mention of the price paid by Christ in the quote from Simon Peter's letter, the first letter Simon Peter wrote that says that we were redeemed not with the feudal things of this world, silver and gold or things like that, but instead we were purchased or redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. And the person's question is, what is the price paid in that? And the answer is that the price paid is primarily expressed in the crucifixion. That's what uh, that, that passage, the blood of the lamb, a reference to the crucifixion. That's also the reference in Romans chapter 3, where the propitiation in his blood uh, is also a direct reference. And also you get this in Isaiah 53, where the purchase is primarily in the crucifixion. However, really the price paid by Christ goes beyond just his sufferings on the cross, because there's an aspect of suffering just by purely by leaving heaven and taking on human flesh. Philippians chapter 2 says he emptied himself, taking the form of a man and being found as a humble man. He humbled himself even to the point of death, even death on a cross. So there Paul says, hey, he humbled himself by coming a human. He humbled himself by letting himself die. He humbled himself even more by dying on a cross. The implication of that is that the price Christ paid was not just that he died on a cross, but that he entered into the full human experience of the suffering of maybe Joseph dies and Jesus had the pain of burying an earthly father. Uh, Jesus had the pain of being rejected by his own. That's part of Isaiah 53, his betrayal by other people. Uh, his suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, he's sweating blood. That's a no, the question or asked about. But in addition to that, you have Judas betraying him there with the kiss. And kind of the betrayal that takes place there is painful to Jesus. Uh, he expresses that. One close to him would betray him. And so uh, the suffering of Christ clearly goes beyond just the three hours on the cross, or even the scourging that takes place beforehand, because even that is noted in the scripture as part of the suffering of Christ, Isaiah 53, by his wounds, by his scourging, we are made uh, well or made whole. Simon Peter quotes from that text in talking about the crucifixion of Christ. So the suffering of Christ begins from the moment he humbles himself by becoming a human being. He goes through the pain of childbirth all the way through the pain of suffering and living in a fallen world from skinning his knee when he tripped as a kid to rejection occasionally by friends to uh, the struggles within a fallen and broken world, maybe even burying his own father. He goes through the pain of uh, ministry to individuals who are constantly pressing in around him and his patience with them in that regard. He suffers through the rejection by some, uh, the betrayal by others, and he goes through the suffering ultimately culminating in the uh, rest, the false trials and accusations, the beatings, the scourgings, the walk to the cross, the crucifixion, and then the turning of the back by his father in that moment where Jesus, in a sense, becomes sin for us in the eyes of his father, and the father turns his face away. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, he, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf. Uh, Jesus' own quote, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So the whole aspect of life of Christ is a suffering on our behalf, but it culminates in from, from the moment of betrayal all the way to ultimately culminating in the crucifixion, public humiliation, scourging, and then the last moment where the father turns his back on the son. And for a moment, the relationship between father and son is severed in a way uh, where Christ bears our sin as if he were a sinner himself. And so uh, that all is part of the suffering of Christ. I think the primary aspect of suffering is that final moment, but all the others are aspects of that and also display the nature of his suffering so that humans could capture or understand how serious our sin is and how great God's love is to allow his son and for Jesus to willingly, lovingly embrace that sorrow for us uh, displays God's love. And that's how we understand what God has done in Christ. So anyway, good question. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, I appreciate it. And we will see you guys this Sunday.